O Lord, you are my God, said the prophet, I will exalt you. I will praise your name, for you have done wonderful things, plans formed of old, faithful and sure. Welcome to the Sunday service from Cram and Kirk on the 28th of June. May the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ be with you. Let us pray. Faithful God, whose mercy never fails, as we join with Christian people the world over to listen to your word and to lift our hearts in prayer and thanksgiving, deepen our faithfulness to you and to your living word, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Of all the many different characters who appear in the Hebrew narratives of the Old Testament, Abraham is one of the most important. Given a new name and promised a new land, Abraham's story is the remarkable journey of one person's faith. His struggle to make sense of God's presence, of God's purpose in his life. It's a story which takes us deep into the nature and character of God. And nowhere is that more evident than in this, this morning's disturbing passage as Abraham is instructed by God to sacrifice his son Isaac. Our reader is our role keeper, one of our elders, one of our former session clerks, Leslie Pendrich. Our reading this morning is taken from the Old Testament, the book of Genesis, chapter 22, and reading from verse 1. After these things, God tested Abraham. He said to him, Abraham, and he said, Here I am. He said, Take your son, your only son Isaac, whom you love, and go to the land of Moriah, and offer him there as a burnt offering on one of the mountains that I shall show you. So Abraham rose early in the morning, saddled his donkey, and took two of his young men with him and his son Isaac. He cut the wood for the burnt offering and set out and went to the place in the distance that God had shown him. On the third day, Abraham looked up and saw the place far away. Then Abraham said to his young men, Stay here with the donkey. The boy and I will go over there. We will worship and then we will come back to you. Abraham took the wood of the burnt offering and laid it on his son Isaac, and he himself carried the fire and the knife. So the two of them walked on together. Isaac said to his father Abraham, Father, and he said, Here I am, my son. He said, The fire and the wood are here, but where is the lamb for the burnt offering? Abraham said, God himself will provide the lamb for burnt offering, my son. So the two of them walked on together. When they came to the place that God had shown him, Abraham built an altar there and laid the wood in order. He bound his son Isaac and laid him on the altar on top of the wood. Then Abraham reached out his hand and took the knife to kill his son. But the angel of the Lord called to him from heaven and said, Abraham, Abraham. And he said, here I am. He said, do not lay your hand on the boy or do anything to him, for now I know that you fear God, since you have not withheld your son, your only son, from me. And Abraham looked up and saw a ram caught in a thicket by its horns. Abraham went and took the ram and offered it up as a burnt offering instead of his son. So Abraham called that place, the Lord will provide. And it is said to this day, on the mount of the Lord, it shall be provided. Amen. Thanks, Leslie. 10,000 hours. According to Malcolm Gladwell in his book, Outliers, that's how long it takes to master a specific skill. The idea is traced back to 1993, and research by psychologists in Berlin who studied violin students from childhood to early adult life. By the age of 20, the elite, the good players, 
had averaged more than 10,000 hours of practice, while the less able performers had averaged only 4,000 hours. 10,000 hours. The conclusion of the research suggested that whatever someone's natural talent, there was no substitute for practice and hard graft. The research reminded me of the story of the late, great Professor William Barclay, renowned as one of the great communicators of his generation. He was asked the secret of his success. He smiled and said it was 1% inspiration and 99 perspiration. Well, perhaps the 1% is what separates the elite from the average, but there's no getting away from it in sport or music or any walk of life. Progress, achievement, success demand typically work, hard work, commitment, practice. And if that's true of sport, of music, of life in general, does it also apply to the Christian life? Does the Christian life demand hard work, effort, commitment? The dramatic, the disturbing story of Abraham offers an insight. Having been called to leave his country, his people, his father's household, and travel to a land God would show him, God promised Abraham a son. As the story unfolds, however, Sarah, his wife, remains childless. And for a long time, it seemed that God's promise to Abraham, his descendants becoming a great nation, would only be fulfilled through the child born to Hagar, Sarah's slave girl. Eventually, in her old age, Sarah gives birth to Isaac and Abraham's inheritance is secured. Or so it appeared, until this awful moment on Mount Moriah, when, without prior warning, God commands Abraham to sacrifice his boy. No reason is given for the command. The Hebrew storyteller doesn't tell us if Abraham's reaction was one of bewilderment or anger or grief. So pause for a moment and ask, what kind of deranged human father would even think about murdering his own son? And what kind of disordered, deranged heavenly father would ask someone to do it. As well as being a story rich in human drama, this is a story where we encounter deep truths about God and about ourselves. God didn't simply ask Abraham to live well, to be a moral, an honest, a decent, law-abiding citizen. God's demand is that Abraham's commitment is such that Abraham is willing to sacrifice the one thing, the one person he holds most dear. Unreasonable, outrageous, a commitment no human being should ever be asked to make. Of course it is. And that's just the point. We are right to be horrified by what God asked of Abraham, because the deep truth of this passage is not about Abraham's commitment to God, it's about God's commitment to Abraham and to all of us. It's a commitment evident in many different ways in creation, in the calling of God's people Israel, in the teaching of their prophets, in the life of Jesus. And it's a commitment which culminated at Calvary when God does what God would not allow Abraham to do. God lets his own son be sacrificed on a cross. Calvary lets us glimpse something of the breadth, the depth of God's commitment. A commitment as powerful as it is humbling, 
And perhaps St Paul put it best when he wrote, if God is for us, who's against us? He did not withhold his own son, but gave him up for all of us. Will he not give us everything else? It was Gary Player, the great South African golfer who was renowned for his bunker play. He was asked one day why he was so lucky at playing out of bunkers. I don't know, he said to have replied, but the funny thing is, the more I practice, the luckier I get. 10,000 hours, evidently, practice, hard work and commitment matter. They matter in sport, they matter in music, they matter in life, and they matter in faith. And for the people of faith, the commitment which matters most is not our commitment to God. It's God's commitment to us. Let us pray. God of Abraham, God of Isaac, God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, gladly we worship you. For like the rising sun, your faithfulness is renewed every morning. And like the changing pattern of the seasons, your commitment to us and to all creation never fails. Lord, have mercy. For together with all your people, we know you have examined us and found us wanting. Christ, have mercy. For we not, have not always noticed our neighbour's need, their struggle for breath, their cry for help. Lord, have mercy as we confess our complicity in the attitudes and ways of living that lead to injustice and discrimination. And as we pray the forgiveness of our sins, grant us not just the desire, but the opportunity to change our ways. For the world's environment, we pray the good creation of God cleaner, brighter, breathing more easily during these weeks of lockdown. As restrictions are lifted, encourage us into new ways of living, ways which respect the balance of nature, the well-being of its land and sea and air. For the world's people, we pray, especially people deprived of the things we often take for granted, education, the rule of law, freedom to worship, home and family, friends, food and clean water. Bless all who strive to be peacemakers in Christ's name, who work to create where others have destroyed, who bring down the walls of ignorance and fear and build bridges of trust and respect. Lead your church, lead your people to be signs of peace, sources of healing and hope in our sometimes broken world. God save the Queen as we pray for our own nation. As the lockdown starts to be eased, guide the Prime Minister and First Minister and those who are advising them to take wise decisions, protecting the health of our people encouraging the health of the economy. Protect from all danger medical staff and care home staff as they continue to treat people infected by COVID-19. Prosper the work of medical scientists researching treatments and vaccines. Draw close to those who are shielding and wondering when this will all end. Hold those who are ill and anyone feeling anxious and alone in your healing presence and power. And comfort all who are grieving the loss of a loved one. Bless to us our communion with the saints, we pray. And bring us at our last awakening to the house and gate of heaven to enter into that gate and dwell in that house, where there shall be no darkness nor dazzling, but one equal light, 
No noise nor silence, but one equal music. No fears nor hopes, but one equal possession. No ends nor beginnings, but one equal eternity in the habitations of your glory and dominion, world without end. The Lord's Prayer. Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever. Amen. Go now in the love and in the peace of Christ our Lord, and may the blessing of God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit rest and remain with you this day and evermore. Amen.